Right, so I'm going to be doing a quick talk now on how to recover from long, painful, heavy periods naturally. So my name's Leah Simon, the Naturally You Coach. I'm a homeschooling mother of six children, one angel boy. I'm a wife, a best-selling author and speaker, a nutritionist, life coach, live blood analyst. Has anyone heard of live blood analysis? Has anyone had live blood analysis done? Ah. That's lovely, okay. Um, and I'm focused on menstrual, womb, and pregnancy health, premature birth prevention, and personal development. So about two years ago, um, I've been a nutritionist for a lot. Is sound okay, everyone? Sound cool? Um, oh, this event's being live streamed as well. So, um, yeah, there's going to be record there's going to be recordings of actually all of the talks that have ever been done by the Hidden Science Academy are all going to be on the new Hidden Science Academy website that's going to be launched soon. So, um, yeah, so you're going to be live streamed, which is what I was asking if it sounds okay. So yeah, about two years ago, after having been a nutritionist for about 15 years, um, I decided that the work that I was doing wasn't fulfilling me anymore. I was working with anyone and everyone, and I just wasn't getting I didn't feel like I was making a difference. I didn't feel like I was helping the right people. But the people that I did enjoy mo working with most, the people that I felt uh, most connected to were sisters. So in 2017, I put myself on a mission to help 100,000 black women to eat for health, think for happiness, and live in harmony, or what I call Becoming Naturally You, by December this year. Um, so you can find out more about this, got that goal at the naturallyyoucoach.com, 100,000 sisters. Because I think... Black women are pretty important. What do you think? Yeah, yeah pretty important. Yeah, pretty up there on the hierarchy. Have you, has anyone else heard Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Yeah. yeah, so the world needs to know we're at the top. That's basically, we need to go ahead and write that law and just put ourselves at the top. Forget about the existential crisis. We have to go up and it up. Right. All right. And, if we, and because we're black women by nature, whether we're mothers, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, nieces, best friends, whatever we are, we are all nurturing by nature to a degree. Do we agree? Yeah. So if we've got 100,000 black women who have been, have been encouraged to eat for health, because we don't need to encourage anyone to eat for taste. Like, I don't need to force rum cake down anyone's mouth. You know what I mean? I don't need to rum, like, I don't need to coax you, put, pin you down and try and stuff macaroni cheese in your mouth. I don't have to do that. Jerk chicken, don't need to do that but we're not as good at eating for health because our taste buds have been altered by the colonizer diet that we've kind of taken on. So it is important for us to re-educate ourselves on how we can eat for health. And trust me, I don't eat anything I don't like the taste of. So nature is abundant. Nature has got so many beautiful taste, flavors, and textures that we don't need to eat the colonizer diet to enjoy healthy food that also tastes delicious. I also encourage sisters to think for happiness. So understanding the negative beliefs and feelings and thoughts that we have, because again, health is holistic, and understand how some of those negative thoughts and feelings can manifest in physical illnesses, and um, begin to have the courage to go for what they want by being very clear about what it is that they do want. Because a lot of people have goals, but they're the goals that have been set for them by other people. You should you know, get GCSEs and then A-levels and then a degree and then get a job and then get married and then live in a nice house with a white picket fence around it, all them ones, yeah? And most of us are not in that box. In fact, a sister was speaking the other day about the fact that as far as our chakras are concerned, our sacral chakra is where our womb is. And a lot of sisters do experience one of the mental and emotional um, contributing factors to a lot of the womb health challenges sisters have is the fact that they're not able to express themselves creatively. Has anyone found that? When sisters are able to express themselves creatively, it does help to create more energy on a spiritual and emotional level in that area, which helps to relieve some of the congestion and stagnation that is the root cause of a lot of the womb health challenges that we have. So it is really important that we learn to express ourselves creatively. And then living in harmony. And living in harmony is when you don't try and do every single health craze that comes on. Everyone doesn't have to do hot yoga and Pilates. Not everyone has to do headstands 15 times a day. Not everyone needs to do vaginal steaming and massages either. So it's about identifying what your specific goals are, not trying to follow every trend, but working out what do I specifically need to do. And for a lot of us, all we need to do is turn off social media and go to sleep. 
Do you know what I mean? We have this FOMO, fear of missing out. We don't want to go to bed because we haven't seen EastEnders, we haven't caught up with Emmerdale, we haven't seen our favourite vlogger. Oh my gosh, she's just uploaded another video. Go to bed! You've got to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. And a lot of us are sleep deprived and malnourished. We might be eating four times a day, but none of the food we're eating has got any nutrition in it. So we're actually stuffed but malnourished. So it's really important for us to learn how to eat for health, think for happiness and live in harmony. So. A little bit about my journey, and this is the very condensed version of my journey. When I was about 11 years old, I wanted to become vegetarian, basically because my big brother was a vegetarian, and I thought, oh, if he does it, <laughs> then I want to do it as well. So everyone said to me, all right, you're a young, grown girl. If you're going to become vegetarian, you need to get your protein. So guess what they recommended me? Soya, right. So I was, because I wanted to become a vegetarian, so they're like, oh, you know, you're going to miss out on your soy, your, your protein, you're a young, grown girl. So yes, yeah, sisters are shaking their head like, nah, fam. <laughs> right, so a lot of us are more aware of the impacts of soya, but at the time, I fully wasn't. So I just took the recommendations that I was given. So I was having soya literally three times a day. Soya milk, soya cheese, soya butter, soya bacon, soya burgers, soya chips. I slept in a soya bed, drank soya water, wrote on soya paper, had soya clothes, listened to soya music. You know what I mean? Half of those things don't exist. But you know what I mean? There was a lot of soya going on in my life. When I was about 17 years old, I developed a condition called metrorrhagia, which is now called inter intermenstrual bleeding. So I'd basically have a period, then I'd have another period two weeks later. So I was having two periods a month. And I was a 17-year-old girl, so I wasn't talking to anyone about my periods. I just thought I, had, I thought I had a curse from God or something because I wasn't finishing my homework. I didn't know. I was staying out too late and my mum put juju on me. I didn't know what was happening. But I wasn't going to tell anyone about my bits and pieces at 17. So I lived with it for two years. And as the expression goes, in order for change to occur, the pain of staying the same has to become greater than the pain of change. And for me, the pain of change was I have to go and talk to people about my intimate area. But at this point, I thought my womb was about to fall out in the morning. When I woke up, the, I would be here, the womb would be on the bed because it was just getting too much. So I did finally go to the doctors. And the reason I hadn't gone to them is because I, my spiritual guide is a man named Dr. Malachi Z. York. And he's always encouraged us to go back to our ancestors, tap into the power of nature, and not to rely too heavily on a system of medicine that wasn't created with us in mind. So I was too concerned that they were either going to operate on me or drug me or ignore me. And after I did pluck up the courage and go and have a consultation, they did the latter. They basically said, oh, if it gets any worse, come back in, two, in, in six months. Now, initially, and, and, the, and a lot of sisters I work with have had that situation. They know they're in pain. They know they've got symptoms. Just like Serena Williams and Beyonce, they know there's something wrong, but the medical professionals disregard their symptoms and their conditions. So... Thankfully, what it did for me, initially it did make me feel abandoned, but what it did, it also empowered me to take my health into my own hands. And that's when I basically came up with um, a herbal combination on my own, aromatherapy blend, lifestyle changes, removed the soya. Within about three weeks, the symptoms had subsided, and within about two months, the condition was completely gone. So that encouraged me to... Well, it, you know, sometimes you need evidence. You might hear, oh, yeah, nature's healing, but until you really experience it, it doesn't make sense. And that, that hit home for me. So um, initially, I became that very annoying person that's just found out about health, and they're questioning everything you think and do. Is that vegan? Is that gluten-free? Is there sugar in that? Is there aspartame? Do you know what aspartame does to you, though? <laughs> like, I was one of them ones, innit? That's exactly how I was. Do you know how many animals died to put out on your plate? I was one of those people. But it also made me realize that I was passionate about helping people with their health and I became a nutritionist and the rest moves on from there. And since then, I've worked with a lot of sisters who, in fact, most of the people that I work with are sisters who have got womb health challenges. So the keys to recovering from, because not only did I have metrorrhagia, the, they, the periods I had were painful, heavy and long. The keys to recovering from that is rever to reversing those symptoms are protection and prevention. So it's not just about getting rid of the symptom, it's about protecting yourself from the condition starting and preventing it from starting. So in my work as a live blood analysis, one of our expressions is the microbe is nothing, the terrain is everything. So we've got microbes, we've got bacteria in our body all over the place, but they're not gonna take hold and create diseases unless the terrain, which is your body, is in a state that allows them to grow. So you can throw 
seeds onto concrete and they're not going to grow because the terrain isn't fertile enough. But you can throw them onto rich, fertile soil and they'll grow like crazy. Now, if you're a sister or you know anyone who's had fibroids and has had those fibroids taken out, and then shortly after more fibroids have grown, that's because nothing was done to change the terrain. In fact, I knew a sister who got the operation to take them out, went for a checkup six weeks after the operation, and more were already growing. Because the terrain is everything. If you check, if you put a swab at the back of a nurse's throat, you will bring back that swab with streptococcus, um, C CPOD, all of these mad diseases will be at the back of a nurse's throat, but her immune system is so high, having been exposed to it, those bacteria can't take hold. When it comes to heavy, long, painful periods, we need to not just address, OK, we have to stop the bleeding, we have to shorten it, we have to stop the pain. We have to address why they're there in the first place. It's also very important to focus on fueling your body's natural innate function to grow, repair, and balance. Because your body is designed to grow, heal, and balance. Just like a car. You put petrol in a car, the car's going to go. You don't need to manually go in and move the gears, move the engine, move... I don't even know what's under the hood of a car, so... <laughs> You don't need to do much. Just put your foot on the accelerator and tell it where it needs to go. And your body's the same. Once your body's got the right level of fuel, you might need to top up the oil and the water and those kind of things. So you need to add a few things. But once your body's got the right fuel, your body is designed to heal, grow, and repair itself. So most of us just need nourishment. And then nothing works alone. So some people are like, oh, I tried Agnes Cactus. I used Evening Primrose Oil. I had smoothies three days of the week, and it just didn't work. And that's because we are holistic beings. We're not just about our nutrition. We're about our lifestyle. We're about our movement, the lack of movement, the overexposure to EMF. The 5G that's coming now is going to be a big consideration for us. So we need to look at things holistically. What we're going to be putting on our skin, which is what Sal's going to be talking about next, all of these things are important. So it's important to have a holistic approach to our health. Now, there are so many reasons why you could develop heavy, long, painful periods. Feel free to take pictures of these slides, by the way. There's so many reasons why you could develop them. So I'm going to go through a quick list of the things that could cause them and then a quick list of things that you can do to recover from them. So dehydration is huge. Even if you go to the gym and you're dehydrated, when you finish your workout, your muscles are going to be in pain. Your womb is a big muscle. There's, there's a lot going on in your womb that requires hydration. Your body uses two liters of water a day. If you're not replenishing that water, your body has to pull it from other places, and it is going to cause pain. So it does increase the pain during your muscle contractions when you're dehydrated. Because when you're, the, your period is basically, the flow of it is your, the, your uterus is mildly contracting to release the blood that's built up over the month that's been waiting for a fertilized egg to come and embed itself in it. If a fertilized egg doesn't embed itself in it, there's a hormone-like substance called prostaglandin. There's a small amount of it that creates small contractions to release that lining, and that's what your period flow is. When there's hormone imbalances, too much prostaglandin gets created, and that's the same hormone that's responsible for the contractions during pregnancy, which is why when there's an over... When we talk about hormone imbalances, that's one of the hormone-like imbalances that can create those ex extremely painful periods because it's like your body is ready to have the baby. Soya and xenoestrogen. So soya has a form of estrogen. Xenoestrogens are estrogens that are found in the environment, so not by foods or in your body. Things that come from like plastic wraps and plastic containers and those types of things. Anything that interferes with... So there's two other hormones, the follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, and the luteinizing hormones. Those are two hormones that are released during your periods, during your um, menstrual cycle. And soya and xenoestrogens can interfere with the levels of those. Those can extend the length of your period. So we need to make sure we're not exposing our body to external hormones, because our body has a hard enough time balancing hormones as it is. Sugar strips your body of magnesium. Magnesium is really important for muscle relaxing. So your body produces a hormone to contract the muscles to get rid of the period, but then it also needs magnesium to keep the rest of the muscles calm so you're not feeling too much pain. That's why Epsom salt baths are so soothing. When, you have people, when you're working out, spraying uh, magnesium oil on your skin is very relaxing to your muscles. So sugar strips your body of magnesium. Magnesium and calcium are alkalizing. 
Sugar is acidic. So when you have lots of sugar, your body has to use all the calcium to balance out the pH. So it's stripping your body of that magnesium and calcium. It also, again, creates acidity and inflammation. Too much alcohol, caffeine, and smoking, again, it increases the prostaglandin, those muscle contractions. It contributes to overproduction of prolactin, which um, attributes to breast tenderness, causes bloating, dehydration, more dehydration, and vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction is where there's not enough blood flow to the rest of the body and to that area as well. So you're losing blood, but there's not enough blood nourishing that muscle. Uh, does all, is all of this making sense? Yeah? OK. Um, the pill, the coil. So those two, especially the hormone coil, those two, again, you don't want anything that's going to synthetically increase your hormone levels. So even though they recommend these things when you do have period challenges, they're not actually the best solution. When you're on the pill, you're just on a permanent pregnancy. You put your body in the state of thinking it's pregnant the whole time. And even sisters who have got things like endometriosis, they will recommend things like the pill to you to make your body think you're on a period so, or, or you're pregnant so you're not having a period, which is what triggers the symptoms of endometriosis. And it's not necessary. There are alternatives to it. Bleached plastic pads, sanitary towels, tampons, they can irritate the lining of the womb by releasing things like dioxins, which is the bleaches. So these, this is a menstrual cup. Has anyone seen menstrual cups? I've actually got two of these, and I'm going to be giving them away today. So make sure you're listening, because I'm going to ask questions so that two of you can win a menstrual cup, so you can try these out. So this is an alternative to the chemical-filled pads that a lot of sisters are using. And there are so many other reasons why sisters will have heavy, long, painful periods, including stagnation, which is why some women have improved their health just by hula hooping, doing um, yoga. And then obviously, we've got things like emotional trauma, blocked creativity, dairy, and excess salt. Now, some of the things that can reduce heavy, painful periods, and again, take a picture of this, because we're going to be moving on to our next speaker in a moment. So herbs like Agnes Castus, Yarrow, Motherwort, Shepherd's Purse. That, that combination saved my life. And I can't recommend these 100% for yourself. But again, work with a specialist to find out the combination that works best for you. But that is a very powerful um, combination. Vaginal steaming. So that's basically administering the power of herbs through steam that you sit on uh, over a stool. Um, and then motherwort, mugwort, and lavender are three brilliant herbs for vaginal steaming. Castor oil packing, where you get a piece of cotton, soak it in castor oil, put it on your tummy, put a, a water bottle on top of it. That is largely beneficial, especially if you've got fibroids. Aromatherapy, and there's two sisters speaking about aromatherapy, so they can go into that more. Detoxing, so I run um, coaching programs, and it's normally in the last three weeks of the detox that sisters find the most benefit when it comes to relieving their period challenges. CMOS, who uses CMOS? Anyone use CMOS? Yeah, man! Give yourselves a round of applause for using CMOS, woo! Irish Moss Posse in the house. CBD oil, Gyanja oil. Yeah, man! Listen, they didn't know us, you know, like we knew what to do back in the day. CMOS, fish head soup, manish water. I know those things sound disgusting. Manish water, you know the big animal's head in the pot? Right, the f listen, the bones of animals have got far more nutrition than the flesh. When they used to have the aristocracy and the aristocracy would throw us the bones and they would eat the flesh and they thought they were doing themselves a favor and doing us a disservice, they were giving us the most bioavailable protein from the whole animal, rich in minerals and healthy fats. CBD oil, Gyanja oil, extremely powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and painkiller, turmeric, dark green leafy vegetables, and dill, and essential fatty acids like omega-3. They increase PGE1, which is the healthy, helpful prostaglandin, because you've got unhealthy prostaglandin that causes too many problems, and then the safe prostaglandin that does the, the proper job. So one of the things that I do is called live blood analysis. What I do is with, I literally take a drop of blood from your finger, put it under a microscope, magnify your blood so I can see what's happening inside you. And as a nutritionist, that allows me to give more specific diet and supplement recommendations. These are some of the pictures of blood that I see. These ones are what we call healthy, like this is kind of what your blood is meant to look like, nice and round, clear in the middle. And then these are blood that have challenges. Now, it's when, when people say, I've gone to the doctors and they say there's nothing wrong with me, but I know there's something wrong with me, doing live blood analysis really helps me to empower sisters to 
to trust themselves. And honestly, one thing I really have to encourage you all to do is trust yourselves. If you know there's something wrong with you, I mean, you're here today, so you've got a good judge of character anyway, innit? You've got good taste, because you're here with us. But honestly, if you feel there's something not right, trust yourself and keep working, keep finding, keep working with people until you find someone that can identify what you already recognize. And a lot of sisters that tell me they've got challenges, and then I see these things in their blood, I'm like, this explains what you were trying to tell people and they were not listening. So always make sure you're listening to yourself. So again, this is what your healthy blood should look like. This is actually a sickled cell. So this is one of the challenges that a lot of our sisters um, are facing. This shows circulatory, digestive, and immune challenges. All of those things will create more womb health challenges. Because you can have parasites, you, don't have, you have no idea. And you're taking everything to get rid of your period pains, and you have no idea you have parasites. Then you have, again, this is more digestive and immune challenges. This, is, this red dot here, this is your body producing its own antibiotic or actinomycin. When your body gets too toxic, your body creates its own antibiotics. Then we've got, so these are the most important for womb health. These cells that have got the white bits in them, these are iron deficient cells. So you might go and have a test and say, oh yeah, my iron's fine, but I'm still tired. When I look at someone's blood, I'm like, no, you're right. You do, you do have low iron. So please, sisters, trust yourselves when it comes to these kind of things. One of the programs I have is called the Womb Wellness Program that you can find out more about on my website. And I've got a free gift called the Womb Wellness Gift that you can find out more about at the naturallyyoucoach.com Womb Wellness Gift that goes into more detail about everything that I was just speaking about. And that's me for the day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry I had to talk 100 miles an hour, but I'm going to get it all in. Um, but now we are going to... Do you want to set up your, do you want to set up your slides? So now I'd like you to welcome our next speaker for the day. Her name is Salem... Pronounce your name, is it? Salem Winter-Baxter. She's an award-winning entrepreneur, cosmetic scientist, founder of a natural hair care company called Root to Tip. She's a hair and the Hair Education Academy. As a long-standing hair education expert in Black Beauty and Hair Magazine, she's going to be talking about how chemicals in commercial hair products, and that's normally products that are not created by us, by the way, um, how the chemicals in them are dangerous and why we need to avoid them, and also the issue of hair loss in our community. So if I could ask you to give a big round of applause for our next speaker, Sal. Hi guys, so my name is Salem Winter Baxter, I'm the founder of natural hair care band Roots to Tip. Anybody here heard of Roots to Tip? Yeah, one person. <laughs> well, hopefully by the end of it, we should be more familiar with the brand. Basically, I started making products. One second, one second. Sorry. Okay. Apologies. Sorry. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, one second. You just got to press play. Present. Up there. Is it different? Oh, yeah. Is this different type of Oh, yeah, this is different. Just press play. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... I am actually obsessed with dry hair. On Instagram, I'm called at Sal C's dry hair because I literally just see people's hair. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I was just saying, I'm li literally obsessed with dry hair, obsessed with hair, obsessed with having us have the best hair days possible. So I started my brand probably about a decade ago now. It sounds like a long time. It was a long time ago. I had a hair loss condition called seabrate dermatitis. Anybody heard of that before? Yeah. It's kind of like the adult form of cradle cap. And with me, I had hair loss at the front of my hair because of it. It got really, really bad. Anybody here suffering with a dry scalp at the moment? Anybody? to say? Yeah, a few people there. <laughs> Let's be honest in here today. I'm here to help you guys. So I also write articles for Black Beauty and Hair Magazine as the resident natural hair education expert. And I have noticed over the past few years that a lot of black women are going natural. I return to the natural hair. Um, anybody here who's gone natural recently in the past year or so? Show of hands. Say aye. Okay, so quite a few. Anybody here who's relaxed? Relaxed or 
Any relaxed hairs in here? Yeah? It's a few people relaxed. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that um, there's been a massive trend towards natural hair in the, over the past few years. But um, I started making products after suffering with hair loss, as I said just now, and I created a product called the, um, the Root Energizer, which is a brown and white bottle, because I went to my doctor and he gave me a solution which was alcohol-based and it just dried up my hair, and it wasn't helping me at all. So I decided to research online how to regrow my hair naturally. So I, I researched into Ayurvedic herbal extracts. Anybody here use henna or Ayurvedic herbs? Yeah? And I also researched into essential oils. I wanted to try and create a, a natural product that helped me to regrow my hair. And I, I, I discovered that, that our hair really grows when the blood flows to the roots, are really circulating and encouraged. So instead of using hair grease and, any, and, and artificial oils and things, I decided to use the root energizer. And my hair grew like weeds. It grew really long. I've got a picture here I can show you guys. So my hair grew back within about a couple of years. It grew to waist length. And I had a daughter at the time who was about three and a half, and she had eczema, six food allergies. And I wanted, also to, I wanted her also to have healthy hair. I didn't want to have any, any synthetic artificial chemicals on her body. She really had the food allergies and the, and the skin condition. I wanted her to be, have natural things. So I created a children's line as well, and I grew her hair to waist length as well. But I kind of had to change my mindset in terms of how I saw her hair and how I saw my own hair. So I stopped using hair grease. Um, I washed her hair like once a week. Um, I conditioned her hair weekly. I did regular scalp massages. And I realized that our hair responds to tender love and care and touch. It also loves water. Anybody here who washes their hair less than maybe once a week? Quite a few people, yeah? Once a month? Yeah. Are we, are we about, about once a month, guys, or was it once every two weeks? Once every two weeks, okay. Well, that's a, that's a black hair care myth. Our hair and scalp loves to be clean. In fact, if you're trying to regrow your hair or grow longer hair, your hair should be washed at least once a week. But I'll get onto that later. So you can see here, um, these are results from the Root Energizer. The, the girl on the, on the left here, she had like really bad nape hair breakage at the back. She, she used to have relaxed hair. She started using the Root Energizer oil. Within a couple of months, her hair grew back. So what she was using before wasn't doing the job. And in the Root Energizer is 100% natural ingredients. I realized that we can actually stimulate the best quality hair growth using natural ingredients and extracts. Mother Nature is the best. And that's a picture of my hair growth there. Okay, that's, that's a few products in the brand we have. Then we have the, the Honey Rain Juice here on the bottom here, which is our number one um, sort of selling product. And our, and our products work on all hair textures and types, which is a brilliant thing. But I'm talking today about EDCs in our hair products. Anybody here ever heard of EDCs before? No? Okay. So you're in for a treat then. So there was a recent study, a few years ago, a study in America that determined that I think 80% of the hair products marketed towards black and mixed race women actually contained endocrine disruptor chemicals. I've got a short video here to kind of give you an insight into what that is. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, let me get bigger. Can I just get it full screen? Thanks. I think it's on the laptop. Over. Hear him. Can't even hear what you're saying. Basically, he's, 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 he's explaining what the endocrine system actually is. I'm going to try and get the sound up. The endocrine system is, is like basically your, all the electrical wires inside your body. So it regulates your... Any everyday products, okay. including plastic bottles, metal food <laughs> We're going to go back. Detergents, flame retardants. Okay, so we'll start again. This is what the endocrine system within the body actually is. For endocrine system... Well, it's a collection of glands that release hormones, which in turn orchestrate and regulate key functions in your body. There are chemicals that can disrupt the endocrine system, which may affect your body, including your reproductive system, nervous system, and immune system. These endocrine disruptors 
are also known to cause developmental problems, so they are especially concerning during the prenatal development of babies. According to the National Institutes of Health, endocrine disruptors may be found in many everyday products, including plastic bottles, metal food cans, detergents, flame retardants, food, toys, cosmetics, and pesticides. Many endocrine disruptors are SVOCs, semi-volatile organic compounds. That means they can be found in the original product, in the air around that product, and then from the air condensed onto indoor surfaces, most notably seen in house dust. There's still much to learn about endocrine disruptors. Of particular interest are the low dose effects. Endocrine disruptors can have effects at low doses that are not seen at higher doses. And that's the opposite of how it works with most other indoor environmental contaminants. In the future, I anticipate indoor environmental assessments, including dust samples that get analyzed for a panel of common endocrine disruptors, which then gets compared to some established exposure guidelines. So basically, that's what the endocrine system is about. It's something that regulates the flow of your hormones in your body. Um, it triggers things in the brain as well. So it's a really important part of our, our internal system. So when you're using, for example, a product that contains endo, um, that contains EDCs, there are loads of products, commercial products on the market that contain EDCs, which, which are basically synthetic ingredients that then leach into your body and control and mimic the hormones in your body. So the fact that you guys haven't really heard about endocrine system or EDCs before is really, really quite, it's, it's quite good because you're gonna learn a lot today. Um, okay, let's see, next. Okay. Next, oh my gosh. So anybody here ever heard of um, a brand called Cantu? Yeah. Anybody here use it? Ha show of hands, please. So quite a few of you guys. ORS? Yeah. Curly kids? Curly kids? Someone say yes? Yeah? OK. So those three brands I just mentioned all contain EDCs. Basically, it's synthetic ingredients that can lead to infertility in women, fibroids, lead to cancer, um, a raft of different things. And the fact that we use them on a regular basis and for a prolonged amount of time leads black women and young girls of sort of a more of a, more of an so I'm trying to think more more at an increased no, sorry let's see today at a more increased risk of developing fibroids and cancer later on in life so I'm going to show you um this goes on oh come on it's not working here this is not working for me Okay, so in 2011, it's now 2020, I, I wrote an article to Black Beauty in the Hair magazine and I kind of um, came across a product called Baby Don't Bald. I realised, I read a study, in, an American study, that detailed that young girls as young as like 18 months to four years old were developing breasts and pubic hair and even having periods due to EDCs in commercialised hair products. So I wrote an article to them and said, you know, well, you need to put this in your magazine, let people know about this. And that was like nine years ago. And these products are still on the market today. Um, I did a brief post about it on my Instagram last week. I'll let you listen to that. So it's only about a minute and a half long. Hi, guys. Good morning. Uh, this is a really quick post okay. about children's hair care and being really mindful about the products you're putting on your children's hair simply because um, there are a lot of products out there that contain endocrine disruptive chemicals and I've been doing a lot of research into this for some years now I first discovered a product called Baby Don't Bald. So this product was marketed towards babies, black and mixed choice babies in particular and the product contained, amongst other things, hormones, animal hormones. Now, why you want to put a product containing animal hormones on your child's hair and scalp is going to seep straight into their bloodstream 
and have a direct effect on the hormones development in their bodies. Endocrine disruptive chemicals um, affect children even more so because their bodies are in a prepubescent stage and they're developing. So as the hormones are trying to do their jobs, things like your pituitary gland and things like that, these endocrine disruptive chemicals inhibit and restrict the job of those hormones. So for example, we have issues whereby our children are going on entering into puberty very early. Um, it's a phenomenon called, it's called precocious, it's called precocious puberty. So you have little girls, four, five, six, who are developing breasts and pubic hair, and some even entering into, into menstrual periods at a very early stage, and it's simply because of the endocrine disruptive chemicals we have in our hair products. Not all the time, we don't have them, but that are found in hair products marketed towards black and mixed race children with acid and curly hair. So please, parents, please be careful about what you're putting on your child's hair. Please look and see. It's not good enough for it to say natural hair, curly hair on the label and for you to take it as gospel rates and So basically, has that alarmed anybody in here today? Yeah, so when you go into your local packs or your, your Sally's or whatever your local hair shop is and you pick up that product that says for curly hair, what draws you to it? Is, it? is it the packaging? Do you guys read the ingredients on the back? Do you try to make the hair just more manageable? Are you guys, is, who's reading the ingredients on the back? Anybody? Quite a few of you. But do you understand what the ingredients are saying? Do you know whether it's completely natural or not? So most of the time, most of the time, um, we kind of gloss through things and say, you might see, like it says, for example, you've got the Curly Kids product up there and the African Pride. So you think it's, are you assuming that's a natural product, the one in the pink jar? If it says olive oil cream, would you think it's natural? To, to a certain degree, we often do. I've circled on, on the bottom of these images here. So these are all ingredient labels. And there are like three EDCs here on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the African Pride one. There's three EDCs on the, on the Cantu one as well, and more on the, on, the, on the Curly Kids. So these are marketed at children, one's an adult product, but if you're using it on your child's hair on a daily basis, you're basically giving her a dose of fibroids, infertility, cancer in later life as well, and all to make her hair look pretty. So it's time we kind of wake up and realize that people who, who, who manufacture these products are not interested in your child's health at all. Now remember, I wrote an article on it about this in 2011. So this has been going on for over a decade. They have the reports in America that state that young, young black girls are more likely to, to develop breast cancer in later life because they're more likely to use hair care products to manage their hair at a very early age, which leads to the onset of puberty from a younger age as well, which is linked to the onset of, early, or, or the onset of cancer at a, um, an earlier rate than their white counterparts. So it's really important to identify what products you're using on your child's hair. Okay, these are the lies they kind of sort of say to us or try to, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like the African hair industry or the Afro hair industry is a multi-billion pound market. When I first started making products, nobody was really interested in natural products. Um, even though I used to market towards people with relaxed hair, we don't mind how you wear your hair, but I just say, just look after your, hair, your own hair first and be mindful of the chemicals. Um, but this is the kind of thing they're trying to cover up. This is what they say to us. A glass of milk every day. That's healthy. It supports the formation of bones and contains vitamins and proteins. But milk also contains female hormones, a natural substance produced by the cow. Is that dangerous for humans? No, because the dose makes the poison. A man would have to drink 35 liters of milk every day in order to consume the same amount of a hormone he naturally has in his body. Women would have to consume up to 1,600 liters, depending on natural cyclical variation. In some crop protection products, drugs, and plastic packages, there are artificial... substances which have an impact on our hormonal system. 
From a scientific point of view, these present no problem. In the licensing process, they have already proven that they are safe when used correctly. For them, the dose makes the poison applies as well. Nevertheless, there is a call for a legal prohibition of all artificial substances with a hormonal impact, no matter how important they are for our nutrition, health, and quality of life. Why? Because there are indeed some hormonally active substances which can cause diseases like cancer. That doesn't mean that all substances carry this risk. There is no record of toxic effects on humans from low doses of weakly active hormonal substances. However, for nutrition, lack of exercise or infections and inherited dispositions have been shown to cause many diseases of modern society. Nonetheless, life expectancy is increasing, not least because modern diagnostic tests and drugs have consistently improved our ability to treat diseases. Thus, a broad stigmatization of chemicals as endocrine disruptors and their prohibition would have no discernible benefits for health. Now that little film there just is a, is a blatant illustration of the lies they feed us and tell us. So when you see a product in the store that says for curly hair, for natural hair, check out the ingredients. Check out the manufacturer behind. I started making products because I wanted my people to really facilitate having healthy hair days. I wanted children to have happy hair that grows healthy and long, um, stays moisturized, not dry all the time. Because oftentimes you buy a hair grease or a cream and you use it on, on day one and, and your hair is dry on day two. So it's about trying to figure out who's really behind the manufacturing of your products because they're trying to sell you complete lies. They said that um, you know if you use small amounts, if, if you have small amounts of EDCs in your products, you're okay. Whereas I know that if you um, issues relate issues actually relate to low doses of EDCs in products and they have like a, a cumulative effect. So you, you might use like one or two products with small amounts of EDCs in them and it builds up in the body. And again, over time, you might not see it in your lifetime, it could be in your daughter's lifetime when she's an adult woman, she gets fibroids. Anybody here have fibroids? Or know somebody who has got fibroids? And what hair products are we using? Anybody? Cantu in the house? ORS back in the day? Root stimulator? <coughs> Those are the kind of products that were listed in the, um, in the US US research article as having EDCs and still do to this day. So you have to really, really be careful. Okay. So black women and girls, again, as I said before, are a really high risk in um, cancer at a much quicker rate than their white counterparts. It was a US study that has been done and identified this, but that because, that's because of the, the products and our exposure to EDCs at a younger age. So if you have a little girl who's maybe three or two and you buy your products on her hair and you're using a product on her hair for maybe a decade and she's 13, she's going to have an excessive amount of, of the buildup. Of so as you're creaming her hair and making her look cute, you're also giving her fibroids and a, and a disease later on in life. So really think about that. Um, I'm going to go through that in a minute. I'll show you briefly. So the EDC cocktail effect is what I just mentioned just now. It's basically when you have tiny amounts or trace amounts of EDCs in different products and you're consuming those or you're putting them on your body. And it's, for example, the issue is when you use a leave-on product that contains a small amount of EDCs. They say, for example, if you have a product that's made by, I don't know, a commercial brand, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a leave-on conditioner or a detector. You apply it to your hair, it's a leave-on product, so it's going to leach into the body. That's an EDC. And then you apply, I don't know, you might go to a takeaway and microbe your food in it in a plastic container. That's EDC leaching into your food more into the body. So it's layering up the levels of EDC. Do you, you want to know what I mean? Yeah. Which creates a cocktail in the body, which leads to all these horrible diseases later on in life. So you have to be really be careful about what you're applying to your scalp, especially. Endocrine disruptor chemicals. So endocrine disruptor chemicals. So somebody asked what kind of ingredients should we, should we be looking at or avoiding. Things like phthalates, but it's hard. I mean, sometimes they disguise with different names. In America, the FDA has different rules to over here. In the EU, there was actually a, um, a ruling on November 2018 detailing that we have to be more, more transparent amongst manufacturers who have to detail what EDCs are in their, on their products. But things like um, 
parabens, methylparaben, propylparaben, phthalates, DHT. There's loads of them on there, but you have to kind of look through and do your own research as well. Um, any any questions? Okay. Yeah. What about the products that are supposedly made for us? So, like the sheer moisture range that has emanated from, you know, Sierra Leone or somewhere, and it's now become big business. I mean, is that something? You know, those products are they full of PVCs? I don't. Um, it's about reading the labels. I know that when products get commercialised, they do change their formulation sometimes. And that was a complaint that I've, I heard I had follow Shea Moisture. So it's really about looking at the ingredients and doing a bit of research yourself and identifying whether there's risk of EDCs in that formulation in the, in, the, in the label on the back. But look out for your parabens, look out for fragrances, look out for things that just don't sound like the natural ingredients and do, just really do your research. Anybody else? Yeah. Any more questions? Oh, I've only got a couple of minutes left. I think moving forward, what you have to do is, in terms of your hair care, which is an open for scalp, is an open set of pores. Make sure your what you're applying to yourself and your skin is not full of EDCs. And that's going to make a massive impact already. The ones you can't avoid that are in the environment, you can't avoid those. But making sure what you're buying and using for yourself is EDC free as a first point. And a question over there, because I'm rounding up with you now. OK. Do you know the question? The question is, what was the question? What was the question? I've forgotten the question now. What did I ask you? I've forgotten the question now. Somebody was asking me a question. Yeah. <laughs> It's not. It's not. It's, it's not good for you. But it's not an EDC. Um, it's just. It's, it's industrial cleanser. So it's very drying. Sorry. It does dry the skin out. So. Okay. Um, I, I think EDCs directly are bad. If things are irritating to your skin and you, and, and you have an irritation from it, then I say avoid it and try and find a more natural solution that's not as harsh on the skin. Um, anything containing sodium lauryl sulfate is going to be very dry because it's actually a, a commercial degreaser um, used in garages to clean the floor. And one final question as I quickly go on to my last bit, sure. I think look for ingredients, um, look for natural brands like Root to Tip. There's quite a few natural brands out there. Look for ingredients that have um, water and, and natural ingredients. I think the first eight products should, first eight ingredients should be natural. And then in mine, for example, only if you only like, I think 0.1% of preservative. So m most things should be natural, not too many ingredients as well. Like for example, I think we have nine or 10 in ours. And most of these have like up to 19 or 20 ingredients. So also how many things are in the product, for example. If it says, if it says a hot oil treatment, it should be oil in there, maybe something else to keep the oil from going around. So not like six different products. You don't need plastic resins in your hot oil treatment. Yeah, so that's where they're getting you with the EDCs. Yeah. Just on your point of preservatives, okay. I do know there's different types of preservatives. Mm -hmm. That's a good one to have. I think if you avoid, um, I'll talk to you on the stand. I've got to wrap up now. But just lastly, we're actually doing um, just a, a hair loss survey for black women. Um, I'd like you guys to um, actually take part. We're trying to get to the root of hair loss in the black community. Um, just briefly, there was, there was a study done in America where 6,000 women were actually surveyed. And most of the women over there knew somebody with hair loss. So if you guys would help me out. So they're trying to bring about solutions for people in our community who often hide it and are embarrassed and ashamed about it. I've had hair loss myself. My mother had hair loss too. She went to Turkey a few months ago, almost died having a hair transplant. So it was a serious and passionate condition of mine. So please do come and speak to me about the hair loss survey. My team's in the other room as well. They'll conduct it for you. 
leave us your details and we'll allow you to do it that way. But thank you so much for listening. <laughs> and come and see me in the other room if you want some healthy natural hair care products. Big round of applause for Sam.